Welcome to this update on COVID-19. Um, this is the, uh, the third update we have had since the pandemic started. Um, and uh, the idea behind the presentation is to update you on new threats we, we see with COVID-19. Uh, and then we have uh, something else for today, which is about our threat intelligence. Um, CSS was founded in 2003, we have about 70 employees, uh, we work 24-7 um, with threat monitoring, uh, we are 100% employee owned and we host our own Copenhagen Cybercrime Conference every year. Uh, we are created by Gartner for our managed detection and response services and our threat intelligence and that is also what we are very known for. The today's agenda is, as I said, an update on the COVID-19 threats we have seen during the last 14 days. So I'm only focusing on new threats that we haven't reported before. Um, I'm gonna have a little uh, chapter about our contribution where we want to give you our threat intelligence for free um, the next 30 days um, because we want to fight this um, pandemic um, as you um, and then I, um, I will have some use cases so you have a better idea on how you can use CSIS as threat intelligence. Unfortunately, today is not a live session, so there will be no question and answer. Uh, you can email me after this presentation if you want to, when you have seen it, if you have any questions. But uh, due to a new exploit in the uh, conference software that we are using, uh, we have decided only to record it. Uh, so nobody can be compromised during our session. So let's start with the cyber threat highlights. Um, so this was what I just mentioned. Usually we use Zoom to uh, make these conferences, uh, uh, webinars, uh, so people can ask questions during the session. And this software uh, called Zoom has been really, uh, have taken some bad hits lately, uh, especially due to some privacy issues with Facebook, um, where it was posting information to, to Facebook that the user were not aware of. Um, but that is actually not the reason why we have decided not to go with today's Zoom session. It's basically because uh, there has been reported uh, two vulnerability, two exploits in the wild at the moment uh, on Zoom, which is at sale for 500,000 US dollars. Uh, and it basically gives the attacker a remote uh, code execution, so directly access to the people uh, that, he, that he targets. But it means that he has to be in the same conference with the person that he's attacking. But if so, he can basically get full control of any machine that is connected. So that's why we have dropped today's session on Zoom. Um, and we'll be back with more updates on how to proceed going forward. Then we have a lot of different vendors out there that are claiming different things in the light of COVID-19. Uh, this one in particular is very contradict contradictive. Uh, you have FireEye that says that you're really not seeing that many themes attacked related to COVID-19 as we would think of. Uh, only 2% of the attacks that we detect in emails is related to COVID-19. And on the other side, you have Mimecast, an email provider, email gateway that says uh, it's about 15% of all block spam that is related to COVID-19. So that is a little funny, I think. Um, WHO um, is still being used in uh, email attacks. And uh, I just checked again, it's because of this reason why you can spoof an email as it seems coming from them, is that they have not protected their email with, uh, with DMARC. Um, so that's why we see it uh, being used again and again. Um, so hopefully at some point they will start protecting the email domain and then it shouldn't be that easy to spoof an email as it's coming from them. This specific attack uh, is a spear phishing attack with uh, an attachment uh, and uh, in that attachment you'll find uh, a malware, an info stealer that basically takes full control of, uh, of the machine and steals any information that you have on it. 
The next attack I found interesting was um, a new trend, I think, is uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, Office 365 phishing attacks, but this one is a little bit different. It has an attached uh, HTML file uh, to it. Uh, and when, uh, when you open that, uh, it seems like you're about to log into your Office 365 account. Um, but when you submit it, uh, submit the user and password, the credentials are basically sent to, uh, to the criminals uh, in a JavaScript form. Um, very neat, very, uh, very easy to do, uh, and have very low AV detection, of course, because it's basically just an HTML file. We have a Europol that has been out and, um, and published a report about uh, COVID-19. There are some really nice key findings in the report. I can only encourage to read it. Um, but they are basically saying the same as everyone else, saying that uh, we see a lot of attacks in spite of uh, COVID-19 using the same theme. Um, and especially phishing and ransomware uh, are being launched to exploit. Uh, the current crisis, but also we see state-sponsored, we see APT groups um, that are, are using the pan pan pandemic to actually go out and make much more attacks. Um, so really nice report uh, and recently published. Then we see attacks um, against uh, medical facilities. Um, and um, last time I told you that we have some of the ransomware gangs that uh, that is out there that says that if we are if we but uh, incident hit a, uh, a healthcare uh, organization we will not carry out our attack uh, so some are saying that but then you have right which is uh, the ransomware that uh, is launched by trickbot uh, and that we have seen that have hit a lot of danish targets uh, lately uh, and they basically don't care uh, so this is a really good example of uh, threats uh, with ransomware and Reich uh, that continue to attack medical facilities despite of the epidemic. Um, that is very unfortunate. Uh, as you can see, Double Paymer and Mace, they are basically says that uh, they would not go targeting these organizations. And if it happens, they will basically uh, make sure that they get back online and don't require money or anything. Another um, statistics I found interesting was uh, Microsoft that is had had made a research from their all the installations where they have counted the files uh, with malware uh, and uh, related to COVID nineteen theme attacks to understand where the attacks is carried out and who gets infected. It's not a surprise that U.S., uh, China, uh, and Russia are some of the big ones out, out there, but you have a big one in Brazil as well. You have actually a big one in Denmark, as you can see, and uh, of course in the United uh, Kingdom, uh, there is a lot of tax and in general in, in whole Europe. So this is the picture seen from Microsoft detection perspective and based on the files that they have seen related to malware uh, and the COVID-19. Then I've seen two new trends, uh, which is not directly COVID-19 thing, but is uh, in the light of COVID-19. So first of all, you see uh, spear phishing attacks, typical come from the, uh, from the business itself, or claiming it come from the business itself, and something about outbreak prevention uh, that you need to take, take the, and you need to read, and you need to take care of, um, and it typically come from HR or somewhere else in the organization that makes sense that they would send this out. Um, in this example, you have a macro Excel file that will uh, infect your machine with the first set loader and then the, the bank of protocol sues. Um, the other thing I've seen uh, is uh, where the fraudsters or criminals, they carry out the attack uh, and tell you that there are shipment delays uh, caused by the coronavirus diseases. Um, and again, uh, you see another type of malware, nanocore, which is a rat, full access to your machine if you get infected. Uh, but again, it's like they're using the COVID-19, but now we've been in this part where now we start seeing delays in shipment, which makes a lot of sense. And there are probably a lot of delays in shipments at the moment due to COVID-19. 
but the criminals, of course, are using that as well. Um, then I saw um, a interesting uh, attack or in this fake news world where you see a lot of people using TikTok, especially the, the younger ones. Um, one of the issues with TikTok, which is a, uh, it's, it's, it's an application where you can get all kind of video information about anything you can come up with. People are sharing a lot of different things in there. Um, they're using a CDN to, uh, to send out the content. Um, and uh, sometimes it seems like, or a lot of times, they retrieve the media content from the CDN They're using HTTP instead of HTTPS, which means that you can, you can intercept this stream of, of content and basically if an attacker could be man in the middle a person who's using TikTok, and then uh, he thinks he sees a video from a known reputated uh, company, and then instead he is being uh, fool fooled with a fake video from from the fraudsters. Um, so that's a, a little another angle into how you can attack, but this is more in the fake news area, I would say. Um, we see Android a banker Trojan malware uh, called Cerberus, um, and uh, this is a banker Trojan which can bypass SMS and uh, has uh, team viewer uh, stealing capabilities, Google Authenticator stealing capabilities. So it's not only SMSs that it can intercept now, it's, uh, it's actually a lot of these two factor authentication apps that you have on your phone. So don't get infected with this Android uh, Banker Trojan. It will be able to circumvent any two-factor system where you're using these authenticators. Um, this specific malware is, uh, is located on this URL you can see there. Uh, and the reason, again, why I'm adding all this in uh, with the sources is because you can get all that uh, by sending me an email after the presentation and we will set you up for our threat intelligence service with no, no um, obligation required from you. Then we have seen uh, the BC attacks is being more and more advanced uh, and again of course in the light of COVID-19 there is a lot of suppliers out there that really need to buy their um, or procurement department that needs to buy uh, things or supplies from uh, related to COVID-19. So uh, the FBI has have warned about that they have stopped seeing a lot of fake suppliers that are uh, claiming they have what you need uh, in this space uh, and uh, and basically they want your money first before they send the goods and uh, of course you don't receive anything. Um, and actually Minecast has also been reported an increase in what we call impersonation attacks uh, this is the BC CEO for whatever you call it. Uh, has many names, but uh, it's basically uh, the criminals are trying to impersonate that they are a supplier or a CEO and needs you to make an urgent transfer of money um, right now. Uh, and uh, they are very successful with these attacks. We have also seen a new rat written in Python called portrait uh, and what is very interesting about this specific findings is that it's uh, it seems like uh, Azerbaijan government is, uh, is one of the targets in the energy sector uh, and they are very interested this group in scatter systems related to wind turbines um, it's a Microsoft Visual Basic uh, attack, so it's a rat bundle in a in a macro um, that uh, that runs uh, once infected. You are infected with the rat that can again do anything you can come up with. Very very low AV detection, um, as it's not uh, being used that much. Um, they're targeting public and private sectors, uh, but currently we only see or heard about attacks against Azerbaijan. Then we have Office 365 phishing using uh, voicemail themes. So now the criminal had to come up with something new, I guess. Uh, they are attaching a HTML file, uh, which um, is, uh, is hidden, or not hidden, but it's, uh, it, it's claiming to be the voicemail. Uh, and once you click on that, uh, you get your credentials stolen. Um, so 
you're expecting an attachment, but it shouldn't be an HTML file, I guess, when it's a voicemail, but, uh, but that's how they carry out the attack in order for them to steal your credentials if you open the attachment. Um, yeah, very, very uh, old fashioned attack, but again, in the spite of COVID-19 and voicemail, um, this is a, a new way to do it. We see state sponsor attack that has uh, hit the US healthcare sector, according to the FBI. Um, the government, uh, uh, the foreign government hackers have broken into companies conducting research into COVID 19 treatment in the US healthcare sector. That uh, is in an official FBI report now. Um, this is really, really nasty stuff, I think. Uh, and. Uh, it is not something that is surprising, but again, um, this is their state-sponsored attacks, how they are carried out in, in these times. Uh, it's really, it's really not fun for for people. We see a group called Gamma Ran APT group that uh, use COVID nineteen uh, theme again in campaigns. Um, they are uh, a group that has been active since 2013 and uh, they are very they're, they're very um, focused on using their macro attacks so it's what you know with the email attachment uh, macro file or macro word document and then a grubber is downloaded vbs code is executed uh, and then the additional payload is downloaded to the victim uh, very low av detection and uh, a lot of different cnc servers has been uh, reported by, uh, by Trend Micro, that again is in our, in our threat intelligence feed. Then we have TrickBot uh, that has really been, uh, been pushing attacks with the COVID-19 theme uh, at the moment. They usually distribute with the, through Emotet, which is uh, the malware that used to be a banger trojan, but now is mainly focusing on on uh, infections and then they sell the access to, for example, TrickBot. Uh, but, uh, but Microsoft has reported that TrickBot uh, is, uh, is again back in business, so to speak, in, uh, in a lot of new campaigns, uh, email campaigns, which we haven't seen for a while, with the macro attachments. Um, and um, basically, if you get infected with TrickBot, they have that malware family have so many different uh, capabilities. They can, uh, they can put ransomware with write on your machine. They can steal sensitive information and blackmail you. Um, they can do basically everything they want to. Typical, they are in your network for some time before the ransomware attack is carried out. Uh, they have can circumvent two-factor authentication. Uh, they, it is a bank of Trojan, so it, of course, can also steal credentials and bypass two-factor authentication to most of the net banks, uh, stealing credit card information. Um, but one of the reasons why it's so difficult to detect, I think, is because uh, they have this delay in the execution on the macro itself. Um, that is uh, one thing to avoid some of the AV detection. So um, yeah, be, uh, be very careful with this uh, malware because this is the one that have hit a lot of targets lately and they are they don't they don't care about the pandemic so to speak a lot of fake online shops has been reported and taken down um, this is from the uk national cyber security center uh, that says they have uh, they have taken down 471 fake online shops um, and uh, again related to uh, to the coronavirus, um, stealing your credit card information, uh, and you never get whatever you think you're about to buy on the websites. So, the next part of my, uh, my presentation is to give you an insight into the threat intelligence that CSIS can offer you. Um, if you send an email to sales at CSIS.bk, uh, you, can, you can basically be set up a trial. The, the threat intelligence is uh, what it contains. It has basically five different categories. It has malware campaigns where you find indicators of compromise or indicators of attacks. You have the malware configuration file. So malware, what 
URLs are they targeting? Uh, how does the web inject look like? And so on. You have uh, threat actors, uh, there are TTPs, uh, what country they're from, uh, what aliases they're using. You get access to suspicious IP addresses, which is both uh, uh, proxy nodes from Tor and uh, other uh, known proxy services, but it's also um, IP addresses that are infected with malware from uh, our sinkholes that you can get access to. And then we have a, a whole area about miscellaneous information, which is, for example, we are monitoring ransomware attacks where the criminals, they are leaking the targets that they have access to. So we have a feed with that from official leaks. Uh, it can be websites that are compromised with MarchCard, um, which is this code that is injected on, on uh, online shops and steal your credit card information. Um, so you might want to watch out for that if you have a you have a, a shop um, and if you get hit by by this malware uh, on your website then you will be informed in the feed how can you access it well there are different ways uh, first of all you get access to our website which is a portal where you can go in and search and extract whatever information you want to uh, it has a full rest api uh, we have created more than 30 different multi transforms to access the data uh, and we are cooperating with a lot of third-party providers, for example, Anomaly, Kings and Union, uh, CM providers, uh, so on. Um, so that's another way to get access to it. How and where to use it? Well, there are different ways to use it. Uh, one category is you can integrate into secure products, such as CM, EDR, firewalls, and DNS. Um, you can use it as security incident handling, so uh, you find a suspicious IP for, from, for example, webmail logins, or you have millions of IPs that you need to investigate. Uh, you can fastly check what IP addresses are suspicious. Uh, you can use it as early warning, so you can be notified when a supplier is compromised. And you can use it for research purposes, find patterns between APG, APG groups, uh, Banger trojans, info stealers, so on and so forth. Um, so this, this is just from, from the web portal where you, you could go in and search for COVID-19 and you will get all the information you know about COVID-19, uh, what malware campaigns we're monitoring, what the IOCs are. So you can go in and extract that, of course. Um, there's a full API description. There are uh, five int. Uh, API endpoints uh, that you can uh, that you can query, um, and uh, I'm going to give you examples. Uh, but everything is very documented. There are even sample scripts in Python in there, so it's so easy to get started. Um, this is, for example, the uh, the script for uh, to uh, to extract IOCs, um, and uh, this is a little program we wrote, so you can easily use it. But you give it a start date and an end date. And if you want only some specific IOCs, such as malicious domains or IBAN numbers or uh, CNC servers, you can specify that. But if you don't specify anything, you get basically everything. Um, the integration to, this is a curator integration, log point integration, and an example of our multi transforms. Um, but to make it a bit more, uh, user friendly to understand how to use it. I've created a couple of examples. First of all, um, let's imagine you just want to extract all malicious indicators uh, and you want to import it. You can automate this, of course, but you want to import it into a secure product, such as a CM system. Well, basically, you just give it uh, these parameters the token, which is in our web portal that you have specifically for you. Uh, you give it a start date, you give it an end date. Uh, typical, uh, if you're extracting everything, you can only extract it from one day. So you want to run this every day if you basically want everything from the database. Outputs is a malware family name, malware campaign, the IOC type and the value. So in this case, what you see on your right hand side is DTA domains that are extracted. Um, but, uh, but you get basically everything out. Then there is another way to use it for, let's say, research purposes. Let's say you want to monitor leaked targets from ransomware attacks. 
We have added in a specific indicator called data posts, uh, which contains uh, what company is uh, currently hit by what ransomware. So on your right hand side, you can see that uh, you have, for example, Lakeland Community College uh, are infected by maze. So we get this data from the official or the public websites where the criminals are posting these information. And we have collected all the different uh, sources that we know of. So we have it one place. But obviously you want to monitor this feed for maybe your suppliers, so maybe even yourself, but I guess if it's yourself, you would know. And so that's another way you can do some research with the data. Um, we use it a lot for also um, finding what is suspicious uh, or if we do forensics. So in this case, you're extracting all your IP connections that you have in the system uh, with a netstat command um, that give you some output. And uh, Maltego is a, is a free tool. You can use it for free for non-commercial usage. Uh, there are some limitations or you can buy it. Regardless, you get access to our Maltego transforms, which means that you have access to all our thread intel directly from Maltego. Uh, what I've done here is basically you can copy a list of IP addresses, thousands of IP addresses. Now I've just copied five, right? So, uh, but you can copy that in to the system and then you can right click all the IPs and ask what do CSIs know about these IPs? So you can easily find out that the IP address 185.181.849 is related to a Danabot uh, rat. Um, and then you can, of course, get a lot more information about the IP address and, and the Danabot malware itself. Uh, but this is a way for you to fastly figure out if an IP address stands out uh, from the system. This specific transform is called CSS campaign name from IP. But again, we have, I think, about 20 different transforms. You can also set up a monitor in our system where you ask us to monitor a specific range of IP addresses uh, and then we will inform you if, that's, if an IP in that range, if we either figure out that uh, one of the IOCs, a phishing site or command control server, is pointing to one of the IPs you asked us to monitor, then you would get an alert on the left-hand side where it says malware infrastructure detected um, and uh, the IP address, and then you can extract more information about what this relates to. In this case, uh, one of our system found a web shell on, the, on, on this website. Um, so it's a Danish website, uh, but I mean, it happens all the time, right? Um, on the right hand side, we can tell you if uh, an IP address is seen in our sinkhole, which means it's infected with one of the trojans. We're monitoring about 140 different trojans uh, or malware families. If an IP range connects to our sinkhole that you have on the list you want us to monitor, we can alert you like this. Um, again, there you can see it's connecting to sinkhole domain called ex something something, um, and uh, that is related to the trojan called Sality. So that is another way to use the thread intel. Um, so overall, um, what we want to offer is a 30 day trial, no strings attached. Email us at sales at CSIS.dk uh, and we will set everything up for you and walk you through and get started. Um, so you can start utilizing all the thread intel that we are providing on a daily basis. That's it from me. I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, sorry that it wasn't live. It's always uh, a bit difficult when it's not live. But um, I hope you have time to see the video later on. Um, for more information, you can also email me at jk at css.dk. Uh, and then I just hope that you will really use this offering that we give uh, for, for the 30 days uh, by contacting sales at css.dk. Thank you for listening.